Hi again, Ms. Tucker here. Today we are going to be talking about our first class of macromolecules, and that is, as you could probably guess from the title of this, carbohydrates. And carbohydrates is uh, just kind of a general term for anything uh, that we get energy from. Sometimes you use a structure. So let's go ahead without a further ado and get started. Um, first thing that you need to know uh, about carbohydrates are where the term is where the term carbohydrates comes from. And a carbohydrate is also known as a carbon hydrate. They just kind of shortened uh, the words or put them together. And they're called carbon hydrates because the formulas are always going to have the same pattern. So carbon and water. So the formulas are always going to be CH2 and OH. And that means that um, carbon or carbohydrate is going to have a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a one to two to one ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. For example, uh, an example of a carbohydrate that you are going to see a lot this year is glucose. And glucose has a formula of C6H12O6. As you can see, it matches a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So they're always going to follow that, and if you're ever given the chemical formula for a carbohydrate, you should be able to readily identify it based on the first question is, does it follow that same pattern? And if it does, then you know that it is a carbohydrate. Moving on. Um, the uses for carbohydrates, mainly they're used for energy source. Um, humans, we consume lots of carbohydrates. Um, you've heard the reference, sometimes you've heard it referenced as a carb, good carbs, bad carbs, all of that. Uh, but carbohydrates um, are an energy source for all animals and for plants as well and a lot of bacteria. Um, we also use them to store energy. So if you have too much um carbohydrate in your bloodstream, your liver will pull it out and store it as a long chain carbohydrate, which we'll talk about in just a second. And uh, plants also use them for structure. Um, most of the plant bulk, actually, the biomass in a plant is um, this structure, and that's called cellulose, and we're actually going to look at that a little bit later as well. So that's those are the main uses. Um, you can find them in a straight form and also a ring. Um, we're going to skip that detail for right now because I'm just going to show you some in a minute, some that exist in a straight chain and then some in a ring. We're actually getting into the molecular structures and what these uh, molecules look like. So you should just be able to, to um, it, you don't want to try to recognize it based on a straight or a ring form because they exist in both. Uh, a lot of our uh, molecules that we're going to look at do not. So that's actually um, kind of a cool thing about carbohydrates. And the monomer is called a saccharide. So if we look at our prefixes, and you'll remember our prefixes were uh, mono, di, and poly, then you know that if I just put one of these with the term saccharide, then I have those um, the names for those compounds. So I can tell a lot about the structure of my molecule if I know if it's a monosaccharide, a disaccharide, or a polysaccharide. So if I have one unit of a carbohydrate, then it's going to be called um, a monosaccharide. If I have two units, like with uh, sucrose, so a good example of a monosaccharide would be glucose. If uh, I have two units, um, like we did, we saw in the video, uh, the previous video with sucrose, then that's going to be called a disaccharide. And if I have more than two, and remember it could be five, it could be 5,000, um, then I'm going to have a, you guessed it right, a polysaccharide. So that's one trick in the naming is that you can tell a lot by the structure of your molecule based on the kind of group that it falls into. And a good example of a polysaccharide would be cellulose. And remember, poly just means more than one unit. So cellulose is actually a really long chain of a lot of individual glucose molecules. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. 
some examples. Examples of uh, monomers, or the mono, remember the monomer of a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. And these are all examples of monosaccharides. Here we've got a three carbon sugar. And sugar is kind of the, the colloquial term or layman's term for a carbohydrate. Um, and in chemistry, a sugar doesn't necessarily mean like table sugar like we think it does. Uh, three carbon sugar, you don't have to know these names. I'll just go ahead and block those out. You don't have to know what any of these are. You're going to see these two later, but you don't have to know what any of these names are. I'm just using these to show you the structure. So here we've got three carbons and then my oxygens and hydrogens are branching off and bonded. Remember these little lines reference bonds. Um, so this is an example of a linear monosaccharide. And these are examples of rings. And this is what I mean by ring structure. I've got my carbon backbone, because remember everything is based on carbon. So I've got my carbon backbone, and that ring is actually closed by an oxygen molecule. So this is a five carbon sugar, meaning there are five carbons in my little chain. And the same thing with deoxyribose, which if you know what DNA me stands for, it stands for deoxyribose or deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, so this is actually the sugar that is involved in making up the structure of DNA. Um, so you've got five carbons here. The big thing here, again, you want to remember these are straight chains and these are formed uh, makeup rings. So that's the big thing to show you on the monomer structure. So monomer of a saccharide is called a monosaccharide and the most famous one, of course, you'll remember is glucose. Some more examples of a disaccharide. Sucrose, which you saw yesterday, is a disaccharide. Um, and we've got glucose. Again, you don't have to know any of this stuff. This is more AP biology level stuff. I just want you to see what two sugars linked uh, together. And if you can remember from the previous video how these were formed, these were formed by a... Anybody remember what the reaction is called? Dehydration. Remember, it's called a dehydration reaction. Reaction is an abbreviation, or RxN, excuse me. RxN is abbreviation for reaction. Um, so we're looking, the, the, the dehydration reaction occurred right around here. Water came out, and then they're now bonded between that oxygen. So we've got two... We've got a ring here, and then bonded with oxygen, and a ring here. Um, that sucrose is one example of a disaccharide. And then we've got a ring here, bonded a little bit differently with another ring, and that's lactose. And you may or may not know that lactose uh, is the sugar that is found in milk. So that's called a milk sugar. You should also know one of the coolest things about knowing whether or not something is a carbohydrate based on the name are the suffixes of these words. So, something else to remember that all sugars, well, all the sugars that you're going to mess with, not, this isn't entirely true, but for you, you can easily tell, um, end in O S E. So lactose, sucrose, glucose, fructose, cellulose, all of those end um, in O S E. This isn't always true, but it's a good way to kind of figure out um, what kind of molecule you're talking about. So there's just examples of disaccharides. Okay, some things to remember uh, from this first part of the carbohydrate video. Um, those are the terms that we saw come up today. Monosaccharide, of course, means one. And an example of that is glucose. Disaccharide means two. And an example of that would be sucrose, which we've seen a couple of times now. Um, and then, yeah, examples, I guess that's something to remember because I just gave them to you. Um, their structures and uses, um, whether or not they're ring um, or, or straight chain form and what they're used for, and that um, they end in OSC. So examples that end in OSC that we were talking about 
um, of course, are glucose and sucrose, and there's also fructose, and there is dextrose, and lactose, you'll remember, is the milk sugar. Don't forget to take the quia quiz. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you jot those down, and um, I will see you next class. Thanks.